ago, Ben and Shayna Miller. I haven't sung this thing in a while, but it brings me a lot of light, so I hope it does to you as well. So we'll sing it with the words now, it's awesome. <laughs> start off this week, as we've been doing the last few weeks, with just a little bit of calmness, of roga, of quiet, inner quiet, of some moments to, to kind of set the tone for the rest of the week. And we've been doing it with the help of Rav Kook, Zichet Tzadik Levracha, and we'll do that as well. But I just wanted to sing a nigun which will 
help us continue to provide for ourselves the healthiest outlook and the most constructive way to to be to just be and for me personally speaking when i come into a zone of really believing that everyone is just trying their best to be the best that everyone's just trying their best to be i get very calm something something's released i don't know exactly what it is but something beautiful in me is released and when I think of this thing, it reminds me, Kulam Ahuvim, Kulam Berurim, Kulam Kedosh, Kulam Osim Be'ema Uvira Ritzam Konam. Everyone's trying their best. Everyone's trying their best to internalize what they think Hashem wants from them in this world. And even if that statement is not true, I believe that the more that one says it, the more that it becomes true, and the more that it's possible for people to spend more time from a real earnest and genuine place wondering, Ribbon Shalom, how do I understand what your Ratzon is, what your will really is? So this is a um, this is a song from the Rabbi's Sons. I've been singing a lot of the Rabbi's Sons lately. I think it's a, a gorgeous song. Kulam bedudi, kulam gibudi, kulam kedoshi, kulam ahuvi, kulam bedudi, kulam gibudi, kulam kedoshi, kulam ahuvi. Kulam Berodi, Kulam Gibodi, Kulam Kedoshi, Kulam Ahuvi, Kulam Berodi, Kulam Gibodi, Kulam Kedoshi. Kulam Osim Be'ema Everyone's just 
just trying their best. And we are too. We're just trying our best. Gotta remind ourselves that all the time. And our best can change from minute to minute. Everyone is beloved. Everyone's a hero. Everyone's a hero these days. So Hashem is Here we are. Towards the end of the month of Tevet. 5781 January 2021. And no one's running away from anything anymore. Because there's no way to run to. We're running away our whole lives, but we can't run away from ourselves. But if myself is someone that I identify as someone who's really trying their best, so just hold on tight and believe and internalize all the love, all the belief that you have in us. Please help us to remember this forever. Kulam ahuvim, kulam berurim, kulam gibonim, kulam kedoshim, kulam ahuvim, kulam berurim, kulam gibonim. Kulam kedoshim, bechulam ahosim, beima uveida, beima uveida, netzon konalam. Kulam ahosim, beima uveida, beima uveida, netzon konalam. So tonight we're going to be learning about these two words, Ema Uvira, fear and awe. And what happens to us when we don't know how to use the function of Yira, how destructive it can truly be. And yet, how we can't really live in this world without it either. So, a few weeks ago, I guess for the last few weeks, as we've been learning some of Rav Cook's beautiful, beautiful, what we call just like uh, Zoom bombs of Torah, these nuggets of, of depth and wisdom. Rav Cook has been pointing us towards Omet Salev, the, the courage that we need in our hearts, and really in, empowering us, empowering us to become warriors. A dear friend of mine, that I'm sure many of you know by now because we've been we, we share a lot of his stuff over the years, um, and one of one of the nigunim that I sing all the time is his nigun Zion. So his name is Naftali Naftali Kalfa, and he just released a, an English album last week, and. I believe the first track he released is called Running, and it's a song I know for, for quite some time. He wrote it a number of, number of years ago. 
And the lyrics are, who am I running away from? What is this I am afraid of? Who am I running away from? Running away from me. I highly recommend you, you finding it online and opening your heart with it. You know, what's really um, at the forefront of where we're at with COVID, especially those of us now that are in another lockdown in Eretz Israel, is that uh, there's nowhere to run to. And one of the things that, that the COVID is bringing up, which is very hard, very hard, but also very beautiful, is the refinement of who I am in my own home. Who am I? How do I act? And how do I receive the people that I live with? Uh, and that's true also people that live alone. Who are you when there's no one else? As hard as that could be. It seems as if like this time, this very, very interesting time in life is, is just simply not enabling us to, to run away to anywhere. And it's pig, it's taking a lot of things and saying here, it's in your face, as Mato says, what are you doing with this? So in that spirit, I want to share with you, hopefully I could do this right today. I want to share with you the following uh, paragraph from Rav Kook, Zechet Tzadik Levrach. This, this amazing piece of Torah that Rav Kook says over here, from the Shemona Kvatsin. Rav Kook is going to also speak about this fear, this fear that we, we generally do not know what to do with, but when we do know what to do with it, like we said before, wow, what a mikveh it is. So he says like this, Hayira, fear, yira, kshelotiz dakek karaui, when it's not used properly, osa hi et ha'adam lesmartut. Smartut. Smartut is like a rag. It's just so funny that he uses this word over here. I saw a translation for it. Um, the words were, um, yeah, it makes you into, a, you know, when, when you don't need, when you don't use fear properly, the mamish makes you into a smartut. Pachdan, a coward. Ve'aluv me'atzmo, you're embarrassed by yourself. No one has to embarrass you. You yourself are completely disgusted with who you are when fear, when this concept of yirat is not used properly. And if Kuk also says, and what happens also is that even the lowest of the lusts suddenly is like a storm because yirat is not in its proper place. And then you, whenever you get a sense of that you have something to clean and work on, you completely lose your mind over it. And you could think that you're the lowest of the low. Misu'ar. You, you're, you're completely stormed by it. From every single lust, from the lowest things to the highest things. This is when your ah is not really in the right place, when fear is not in the right place. And there's a lot of fear in the world today. There's a lot of fear in the world today. So Rav Kook says, and this is something that I, I really don't understand. I understand what the words mean in Hebrew, but the Pneumius of it, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. And therefore he ends here, al therefore, Tzarich liot dafka arum b'yir'ah K'day In order to purify this concept of fear, one has to be a room beira. One has to be naked in yira. I've been thinking about this for a while. What this concept means mm -hmm. completely, you know, a room beira could can mean just a thought. It can mean to completely forget about whatever the connotations of the word yira had in my life beforehand. Think about it again as some kind of a concept and then tune back into it so that um, it can be refined, so that it can be purified somehow. And we have to do that with a lot of things, by the way. Even with simcha, sometimes we have to kind of just stop and be like, wait, 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 what, what is it all about again? What's simcha all about? Oh, yeah, yeah, let me look at it again without any of the way that, that I used to look at it. 
deeper you, you look into these words of Rav Kook, you understand also that in this last week's Parsha, when we had the Mialdota Ivriot, the, the, the Hebrew midwives, they had Yira, but Yira was in its right place. Batir ena hameyaldot eta elokim. They feared God only. But what kind of what kind of fear? Not the type of paralyzing fear where you're scared you're going to be burned and going to hell every second. That that's not what we're talking about either. When it comes to the fear of God, I like to 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 bring another teaching of Rav Cook regarding fears that. I, I, I have fear when I taste love and I'm so fearful that, God forbid, I could do something that would cause the love to disappear. So I have yira over the ahava. This is what the, 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 these midwives were able to tune into. And for that, you know, the more fear you have that's not in the right place, the least your mind is settled. And Alavai, what a gift it is to go through one day of having Yishuv Adat, the settling of the mind. It's what we all hope for each other, just to have a mind that's settled. It says that the, the Torah tells us that these midwives, what was their reward? Their reward was Vayas Lehen Batim, God made houses for them. And even though Rashi explains to us that the house of the Kohen and Levi is what emerged, the houses of the, the, the Kohens and the Levites is what emerged from these midwives. The Ishbitzer, the Meashilach, takes this and he says, No, a bite is the place where you can breathe, where you're settled. Hopefully, hopefully, because you allow yourself to be yourself and work on yourself in a settled manner, restoring Yira to the proper place. But when a person is, when his Yira is consuming him, even if it's a year from God, but it's a it's a consuming fear. It's a fear that doesn't really give you room to breathe or think. Rav Cook is warning us and saying, Chavre, you got to stop at that moment. You got to stop right then and there. Because what we're here to do right now is to build and create for ourselves vessels, soulful vessels, in order to to contain the koach, the strength that this world has to offer. But consistent, you know, running away, really, you know, running away from fear or running away from anything that we see inside of us that we don't like so much. And we run away the second we can see it, it's damaging everyone. And uh, it it's getting clearer, I think, that today, Hashem is saying you have nowhere, there's nowhere to run from. And the fear is on the table. It's right there. But the more you put the fear in the place where it should be, then the more calm should be the result. If you just have Yirat Hashem, like we learned last week, at the Gerebi said about Rav Kook, this is a person who truly is not afraid of any human being, but is so filled with fear of God in the right place. In the Kabbalistic works, this is called Yir Nefula. When fear has fallen, the concept of fear is there, but it's fallen, it's descended into a place that needs to be, and it needs to be redeemed from there. Well, we have, we have all the time in the world to do anything right now. But since none of us have any idea what tomorrow brings in general, but specifically these days. And five, six months ago, no one ever dreamed they'd be where we are right now. What a wonderful moment it is right now to tune into the Midah of Bitachon. I was sharing with my buddy Yossi last night that uh, I was telling him, I, I so wish I can go to the, I want to see the Amshin of a Rebbe right now. I haven't seen him in so many years. The last time I saw him and I shared with him something that I needed I needed help with, he said to me, try to string yourself into the bitachon of Hashem Yisbarach. Meaning, try, the, I, the way I understood it wasn't, wasn't, just try to make sure you believe in God, but weave yourself. Bitachon, weave yourself in bitachon, put yourself in and out of this world of bitachon where the yira gets stored in the right place, 
And then you'll be able to do all other things that your heart truly desires to do in order to really do God's will in this world. Friends, I wish each and every one of you, I daven, we all daven for each other, but I, I want so badly to just tell you that, and hopefully you'll feel this, that we are all trying our best. And if we can conquer this concept of fallen fear, or Hashem, Vayas lahem batim, the houses that we're kind of constricted to these days will become mamish Yiddish houses. They already are good Jewish homes, but even more and more solid, beautiful, warm, redemptive homes where nothing can take us away from keeping our eye on what matters in this world. And what a time to be alive, like my dear friend Rabbi Judah Michelle says, because if that becomes the focus of every home, to be a home, we're with the Mialdota Ivriot. We're in a good place. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you later in the week. Ba'avarabah.